Good evening, again, Assalamu alaikum, ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin by thanking you all, Master Sahib, you for making this possible and for you taking up time to be here this evening. You mentioned uh, two points uh, of not envying my position, and there's a third that I'd like to add, and the third is when you have to travel to places to deal with challenges that are not your creation, uh, but you have to deal with them. The last uh, few days, I've been hopping from capital to capital, dealing with a fairly dense situation, which I believe, if it went out of hand, would, be, would result in a new conflict in the region, and our region has seen enough conflicts, and perhaps is not ready for another one, doesn't have appetite for another one, and the, the consequences can be disastrous. Uh, I'm here on a very short visit. Uh, I got him uh, last evening and had a fairly packed uh, uh, program in New York, uh, because as you must have heard, uh, yesterday, we succeeded uh, for the second time uh, in, in, in 50 years, and the second time uh, after a gap of 50 years, 50 years, for the second time, uh, to get uh, a discussion of the situation in Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir at the Security Council. Uh, we had one on the 16th of August when uh, the Indian government had uh, undertaken certain measures which we thought were not just illegal, they were violative of Security Council resolutions. And yesterday we had another one. Uh, this was uh, on my request. I had written to the President uh, of the Security Council and also written to the President of the, uh, to the Secretary General of the UN. Uh, drawing their attention to the developments that have taken place, which, in my view, uh, could be threatening peace and security in South Asia. Uh, that request uh, of mine was supported by the Chinese, and finally we succeeded in getting a briefing from the political department of the UN and the unmoking observers uh, that uh, are placed uh, representing the U.S. there. The discussion went on for over an hour, and some very obvious points were made. One, that, and the observers said that, they felt that they had complete understanding and cooperation with Pakistan, and they could not say that for India. Indians do not uh, permit them uh, free access. They do not allow them uh, beyond uh, Shiri Nagar at most, you know, Ooh. and then also very reluctantly. On the other hand, uh, Pakistan is open and give you access. They did acknowledge that, uh, as pointed out by me in my letter, that violations uh, across the line of control have been consistent and they have been going on. And I did point out that in 2019, close to uh, or perhaps over 3,000 uh, violations did take place. Uh, human rights abuse, uh, Indians do uh, cultivate this impression that things are returning to normalcy in, uh, in uh, the Indian occupied Kashmir, and they stage dramas like the one uh, the other day when some envoys were taken uh, on a guided tour. They were not given free access. Uh, they didn't have the opportunity of meeting the detained leadership over there. Uh, 
international media is still not permitted to uh, go there and report uh, freely. Uh, the use of force is excessive. Uh, the, the young boys being picked up, women being sexually harassed is, is now known to everyone. The use of pellet guns is not unknown. Uh, and the reaction uh, is uh, not as obvious as it ought to be because of the communication blackout uh, that they have imposed uh, over there. Internet services are still suspended despite the Supreme Court of India ruling that it is illegal. They continue with uh, that high-handedness. So uh, the discussion that uh, took place uh, clearly spelled out that the situation uh, is concerning and uh, people are concerned about it. One other Indian uh, propaganda was negated very, very clearly yesterday, and that was they have been trying to say this is a internal matter, and uh, why should the Security Council be addressed? To that, the UN has responded very clearly. The statement of the Secretary General is very clear that the issue remains on the agenda of the Security Council, and uh, we cannot uh, wish it away, even if we want to. The second uh, uh, point that was raised by some of the countries, why doesn't, uh, why don't Pakistan and India, why don't they talk about it bilaterally? There again, uh, our position has been very clear that we have never shied away from a bilateral engagement, but look at the attitude the Indians have adopted. Uh, since we came into office in August 2018, uh, a number of options have been made are rebuffed by Indians, and not just rebuffed, they have taken steps which have further aggravated the situation and have further complicated the situation by uh, bifurcating the state into two uh, uh, unions, uh, by uh, depriving Ladakh of his representation, by um, bringing in more troops to, to uh, uh, suppress uh, and oppress people. Uh, they have uh, uh, very clearly uh, demonstrated that they have no room for dissent. By undertaking legislation which is discriminatory in nature, you know, uh, particularly pointing out towards Muslims in India, uh, they have seen that uh, not just the Muslims, other minorities uh, in India, and many, uh, in, uh, many Hindus in India who believe in the secular image that the founding fathers had for India, have yet very strongly. They have, uh, you've seen protests all over. You've seen chief ministers leading protests uh, in, in, uh, in their capital cities. So the situation uh, over there is a very complicated one. And we were able to highlight to the, to the Security Council. Because of the domestic challenges we felt in Pakistan that they might get involved in some other this adventure uh, and uh, uh, undertake some kind of a false flag operation uh, as they did uh, in February. Obama uh, is, is a case in point which Pakistan retaliated but uh, our delegation was uh, measured uh, and we showed restraint. We did not escalate. We did uh, shoot down two of their aircrafts in self-defense, but returned the pilot immediately. 
We did target uh, their areas, but made sure that there were no casualties that took place. So there was a good debate that took place uh, highlighting uh, the, the situation in uh, the Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, uh, had the opportunity of uh, meeting the Secretary General, uh, meeting the President of the Security Council, and the President of the General Assembly. So it was a good uh, uh, round discussion that I had in New York. In Washington today, I've had the opportunity of uh, interacting with uh, members of the Congress. I met the uh, rejuvenated, activated uh, Pakistan-U.S. Uh, Congress uh, caucus, uh, congressional caucus, and I was happy that despite uh, you know, the, the activities that are going on uh, up on the hill, uh, people and congressmen could take up time and, and meet with me and uh, hear my point of view on uh, the situation in Kashmir, uh, the situation in Afghanistan, and, and the Middle East. Had the pleasure of meeting the senior members of the uh, of, uh, Senate Foreign Relations Committee, uh, interacting with them as well. So, um, it was a fairly full day, uh, and tomorrow, I will be meeting uh, Secretary Pompeo and the National Security Advisor uh, to share with them uh, uh, my assessment and hear from them, uh, you know, how, what are their expectations and how do they see uh, things unfold in the days ahead. And I'll be leaving tomorrow evening, so it was very little time. But thank you, thank you. Uh, you could take our time uh, for this brief interaction. The ambassador mentioned, and I would uh, completely agree with him, that our Pakistani diaspora has been uh, excellent. They have been uh, helping Pakistan, and they have used their influence, wherever they have had influence, in. Uh, uh, mobilizing public opinion for Pakistan. Uh, just going back a year, a year and a half, what I noticed today that there was a change in mood uh, on the Capitol Hill. Uh, June, uh, August 2017, when this, uh, the new South Asia strategy was announced, Pakistan was viewed. Uh, negatively, <coughs> all ills were being put in your basket. But today, uh, Pakistan is being viewed uh, positively. There is a recognition, there is appreciation that Pakistan has um, sincerely facilitated the peace process that has moved ahead in Afghanistan. There is hope. We also recognize uh, spoilers, and they could be spoilers, uh, parties that are not interested in seeing a peaceful, stable Afghanistan. Nonetheless, uh, the administration recognizes the fact that Pakistan has contributed, Pakistan has delivered in convincing uh, the Taliban to come to the negotiating table and getting the authoritative delegation constituted that they can talk to. And they have uh, had uh, meaningful discussions. They've had, uh, they've made good progress. And the announcement last night uh, uh, was fairly encouraging that the Taliban have agreed uh, to cessation, cessation of hostilities uh, and are willing to uh, create that environment, that enabling environment that will make the agreement possible. And hopefully, if the agreement is signed, we move on to the next stage, and that is initiation of the intra-Afghan dialogue. Uh, 
uh, I was also able, and tomorrow I will try and share with uh, the Secretary of State uh, the delicate situation, the human rights abuse that we are uh, viewing in uh, Indian occupied Kashmir. Uh, we feel uh, that that can be uh, dangerous and that can push the region into some kind of a new conflict which we do not want. Uh, our agenda is peace in the neighborhood so that Pakistan can deal with the economic challenges that are today a real obstacle uh, for us. We inherited a fairly difficult economic situation, but it has been piling up. It hasn't happened overnight. Uh, things have built up, you know, it's been, uh, uh, things have been deteriorating for over a decade, uh, and now they've reached a stage where we had to once again go to the IMF for a, for a new stabilization program, which is always painful to implement, and, you know, you can see that, but we had no choice but to do that. Uh, we are trying to refocus on the economy because uh, I am convinced that foreign policy objectives of Pakistan cannot be met if Pakistan <coughs> remains economically vulnerable. Uh, then we cannot uh, take uh, decisions uh, as independently as we would like to take decisions. So here again, um, uh, the community here can contribute by convincing uh, American businesses to come to Pakistan, invest in Pakistan, create jobs there. We are trying our utmost to uh, uh, undertake reforms that will uh, enable ease of business uh, and can be attractive to people. I will not go on and on uh, because uh, if you have some questions, I will be able to answer them. And they will call it tonight because I have to prepare for tomorrow's weather. Thank you.